Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Android Authority. Now today I want to tell you something that you've never heard before and it's a bit of a dangerous topic and I'm a bit frightened about making this video because I think that once this information gets out there, my life is going to be in danger. Now there are powers, there are forces out there that don't want this information to be spread. So we have to be careful. You have to watch this video and you have to get this information out there. And also please keep an eye on me to see if I'm still posting on social media to make sure nothing's happened to me. Now what am I talking about? I have been to the United States maybe half a dozen times, six or seven times. I've been to New England, I've been to Texas, I've been to Nevada, I've been to California. And here's the thing, I've never seen a cat. Not one, never seen a cat anywhere. Now when I look at the media, when I look at the newspapers and the YouTube and the television and everything, there are cats everywhere. People tell me there are cats in America, but I've never seen one. What's happening? Well, I tell you what's happening, I'm being drugged. I'm being drugged by the American powers maybe not even the government, higher than the government. And if you notice, when you go to the airport, all those people, the security guards and the custom people, the TSA, they're all wearing gloves. What are they frightened of touching? Why, why are they wearing gloves? I don't wear gloves, they're wearing gloves. I reckon that they must paint something on all the, the handrails and on, on the fingerprint reader. When you put your fingers on the fingerprint reader, it must all be painted with some kind of mind-altering substance so that when I get into America, I can't see any cats. And have you thought about this? The ancient Egyptians were obsessed by cats. You've got all these hieroglyphics and there's always animals in the world, but there are cats everywhere. Cats and all the hieroglyphics. Why are there cats everywhere? And then when you come to the American dollar, you've got the, Ameri you've got the pyramid on it with the, with the eye over it, cats. Cats, and it goes way back to Egypt. Now, what is going on? I think that the actually, the real power in America is cat people. I'm not talking lizard people. They got that whole wrong with that lizard people idea. We're talking cat people. There are cat people that are running the world and they don't want you to know about it. And they are, they are conning you, they're tricking you. And maybe it's the other way around. Maybe if you came to my country, maybe you won't see any cats. Maybe it's a global conspiracy. Maybe they're all into it. And what's all this got to do with 5G? Well, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you now. So if you want to find out more, please, let me explain. Okay, so what has all this got to do with 5G? Well, what I'm demonstrating is how you can take some information and you can distort it and completely come to the wrong conclusion. The reason I haven't seen any cats in the USA is because when I go mainly to the USA, I go to conferences, which means I see the taxi, an airport, the taxi, the hotel room and the conference center, and that's it. What's this got to do with 5G? Well, obviously there's been a lot of controversy about 5G, even to the point where people have started setting fire to 5G equipment, which is a serious, a uh, thing, first of all, because of course it's a crime, it's damaging property, but also the engineers and people around them are coming into danger because of this kind of thing. So we need to seriously look at what's going on here and just try to stop this nonsense absolutely right now. So we're gonna talk a little bit about things like frequencies and modulation, and we're gonna talk a bit about energy. Uh, we're gonna try to keep it simple. I'm not gonna go as far as looking at Planck's constant and things like that, but we're gonna generally try to have a look at what's going on. Now, if you were to take your car and drive it out somewhere into nature, you wanna escape from the city and you kind of just, you know, you go out to a nice park somewhere and you take out your sandwiches and you take out your thermos flask and you wanna have a nice coffee and then you lean over and you switch on the radio to listen to some music. And it's another beautiful day in paradise. Radio. Where's that music coming from? You're in the middle of nowhere. You're in the middle of a park. You're, you're not... Because it's coming through the FM radio wave. So wherever we go uh, in this world, we are being touched by radio waves. Some of them, most of them are man-made. Some of them are naturally made. And of course, when you look at radio waves and we look at the whole idea of the electromagnetic spectrum, of course, there's all kinds of different uh, waves that are coming as light waves being the most important and then probably secondly most important heat because without light and without heat of course we can't even live. Now FM radio works on a frequency of let's say 88 megahertz up to what 103, 104 megahertz. Now of course there are other types of radio waves if you go the other direction to 27 megahertz so lower than 88 megahertz you've got CB radio. What's your hand? And a CB radio works at about four watts and you can maybe get between one and five kilometers distance out of a CB radio depending on uh, the setup. 
Then after uh, CB, you've got then FM and AM radio, and then you go into digital broadcast television, terrestrial television, that's about 400 megahertz up to somewhere in the 800 megahertz region. And then above that, you've then got uh, cell phones. So starting with 2G, way back in the day, we had kind of 800 megahertz up to 1900 megahertz, 1 1.9 gigahertz. And then we had 3G, that was mainly based around 2.1 gigahertz, depending on what country you're in. And then 4G covers quite a range of frequencies, down as low as maybe 700, 600 megahertz, and then up as high as 5.9 gigahertz, just depending on your country and your region. And then now with 5G, we've kind of got the same frequencies down just after digital television, terrestrial digital television, you've got 800 megahertz, and it can go up to about 5.9 gigahertz. Now that's what's called the sub six, sub six gigahertz band, because it covers this range from above FM, above digital TV, and then from there, where 2G, 3G, and 4G have sat for many, many years, and then up to just under six gigahertz. Now there is another range for 5G, which we'll talk about uh, in a minute. Now there are a couple of other important uh, frequencies to talk about. One of course is Wi-Fi. Now Wi-Fi is either 2.4 gigahertz or five gigahertz. So in your house, if you have Wi-Fi set up, then you are transmitting in your house 2.4 gigahertz or even five gigahertz. And, and microwave ovens. Uh, they are called microwave ovens for a reason because they heat up the food by sending in uh, radio waves at, well, what frequency would that be? Oh, 2.4 gigahertz. Exactly the same as Wi-Fi. <gasps> oh! And then suddenly now we, we get all these worries. And the reason it's 2.4 gigahertz actually is because that is an unlicensed frequency band, which is why Wi-Fi is able to work, why Bluetooth is able to work because you don't need to buy a license to operate in that band. Wi-Fi works at 100 milliwatts. 100 milliwatts. Tiny, 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 tiny. A microwave oven works at 800 watts. So you can see the difference between 100 milliwatts to 800 watts, even, even a one kilowatt microwave oven. And the regulation is that while that can happen inside of the microwave, once you get outside of the unit, there are strict controls about how much of that comes out, which is even why, if you notice, even the door of a microwave has kind of got like a Faraday cage on the door, even though there's glass there, because they don't want the microwaves to come out uh, into the environment because we want very tiny amounts of, of energy, like 100 milliwatts that comes from the Wi-Fi, not 800 watts that comes from your microwave. Now, energy power plays a big part in this discussion. Now, all energy sources are dangerous at high levels. That's just a fact, okay? So you have to understand this. Light is dangerous at a high level. If you look directly into the sun, you can do damage to your eyes. If you are cooking something and you get too close to the fire without even touching it, just the heat that's radiated off, radiated off, okay, when you go near it, you can burn your skin. So all energy sources, heat, light, radio, whatever, ha can be harmful at high enough levels. I want heat! Fire! And of course the military in every country has been using the fact that energy sources at high levels are dangerous for all kinds of warfare. Bombs are explode and cause high amounts of energy and they are dangerous. Even light, a flashbang, causes such a bright light that it can affect the people in the room and they are dizzy, they fall over, they can even fall unconscious. Flamethrowers are a pretty good example of using heat to fight against somebody. So all forms of energy can be used and weaponized uh, in a very unfriendly way. Just as we're on the same page here, you know that radio waves can't create DNA or RNA. All viruses have either RNA, there are RNA or DNA viruses. Some of the most complex ones have up to 20 genes in them. You can't create genes RNA and DNA with radio waves. I can't believe I have to tell you this, but you can't. Just want to turn away from talking about 5G and cat people for a moment and talk about the complete 2020 Python programming certification bundle. If you want to start learning Python or you want to upgrade your career, then this bundle is a great place to start. Doesn't matter whether you're a coding beginner or whether you've already got a couple of languages on your belt, this bundle has everything you want inside of it, including look at the introduction to Python training. Uh, and this is an absolute beginner one. 141 lectures over three hours of content. And that's one of the 12 courses 
courses that are available. And my eye caught this one, Mastering PyTorch for Artificial uh, Intelligence, 52 lectures and six hours of content. And that's again, another one of the 12. There's 12 in total. So if you really wanna get into Python, why not check out this deal? Now, when we talk about transmitted radio wave energy, we use a scale called decibel milliwatts. Now, it's an interesting scale because it's not linear. And the way it works is that zero decibel milliwatts, so zero dBm, is the equivalent of one milliwatt. And if you go down to minus 10 dBn, it means that the t signal is 10 times less powerful. Which means if you do the maths, minus 10 dBm is 0.1 milliwatts, minus 30 dBm is 0.001 milliwatts, and minus 60 dBm is 0.000001 milliwatts. Okay, now here's the interesting thing is that a Wi-Fi signal, if you get a Wi-Fi signal of minus 60 dBm, so no, 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 whatever it was, 0.01 milliwatts, you still get a Wi-Fi signal. Very, very small radio waves can still transmit useful information. And when you go right up to your Wi-Fi, if I went right up to my Wi-Fi with a meter now, I might be getting minus 30 dBm as the kind of power coming out of my, my Wi-Fi unit here. And interestingly enough, any 3.5 magnitude star is bombarding the Earth with minus 60 dBm milliwatts of radio power. And of course, there's radio astronomy, and there's a whole bunch of things that looking at the different wavelengths that are available to try to map the universe, the wonderful universe that we are in. So here's the shocking thing. If you go out with a, uh, a mobile uh, 4G device, if you have minus 50 dBm, which is 0.0 whatever milliwatts, you get a good signal. It's not a bad thing, it's a good signal. You can actually talk to people using that signal. Now, that's a very, very, very tiny piece of uh, energy. Now, the reason for that is because this thing called the inverse square law. Now, you may have learned about this uh, at school, but basically, if you have an energy source, so it could be light, could be heat, could be radio waves, okay, and you are start at one meter away from the source, if you move from one meter to two meters, so you've doubled the distance, the amount of energy goes down by four, by a quarter. And then, of course, if you move further and further away, it falls off very, very quickly because you're dividing it by four every time you double the distance. So if you want to be able to pick up, uh, a, a, if there's a radio mast, a cell tower near you, well, actually, once you've got just a couple of meters away from it, the, the power levels are just dropping drastically until they get to you in the street when you're actually you've got minus uh, 50 dBm, minus 60 dBm, very, very low levels you do realize that all of the governments in the world and all of the inventors of 5G technology use 5G technology. So they're all gonna be using it. So if they know that it's harmful, then they're actually shooting themselves in the foot because they use it th themselves. So, so why, why would they do that? Why, why, why would they do that? So in fact, actually, when there are cell towers around you, the amount of power is so very, very, very tiny. That is not actually the problem. People talk about that being the problem. Oh, there's so many cell towers. That's not the problem. The problem is when you pick up the phone and you want to speak to somebody, you have to transmit a signal back to that tower. Now, that's a different story because now you're the transmitting source and you're trying to reach something that's maybe 500 meters away, half, half a mile away, half a kilometer away, whatever it is. Now, the maximum allowed transmissible power from a 4G uh, LTE phone is 200 milliwatts. Now, they've done some interesting testing where they've tested uh, mobile phone usage in rural, suburban, and inner city uh, environments, in city environments, to see how much power they actually transmit. It's actually minus 2.3 dBm. So it's a very, very much lower than the uh, 200 milliwatts that we were talking about a moment ago. In fact, it's about 0.6 milliwatts. So here's an interesting thing to remember. When there are more towers, it's safer. Now that's probably going against everything you've understood. What do you mean it's safer when there are more towers? They're telling me I'm being bombarded by radiators. Think about it. You are holding in your hand a transmission unit and you have to transmit a signal to the nearest tower. When there are less towers, that means the chance of the tower being closer to you is less, so the chance that your phone is using more power to transmit. So it's actually better for you in terms of any worries you have about the amount of power that's being transmitted from your uh, phone, it's actually better when there are closer towers to pick up 
the signal because you don't have to send so much power out. It's just logical. Oh, by the way, I will be leaving links to any important references that I've used for some of these numbers in the description below. Now, when we jump to 5G, there is this second band of frequencies which are much, much higher. These ones start at 24 gigahertz. So that's quite a higher leap up the spectrum. And this is why people have started to get worried about uh, 5G because this is an, in one sense an unexplored area in terms of commercial consumer uh, products. And then people latched onto this thing that there is a weapon designed for the US military called the Active Denial System that runs at 95 gigahertz, which technically is in the range of the second batch of 5G uh, frequencies. And they use that to disperse crowds and the crowds feel tingling on their skin and it makes them want to leave. But what no one tells you is that that thing runs at 100 kilowatts. 100 kilowatts. Of course they feel tingling on their skin. It's 100 kilowatts. Now one last quick thing to mention is this alleged connection between 2G, 3G, 4G and now 5G uh, and cancer rates. Now I got my first 2G phone back in the late 90s. So effectively for the last 30 years I've been using cellular technology and of course the government, particularly there's one program uh, in the US, tracks cancer rates. And if you plot cancer rates against the number of mobile phone users, if there was a correlation of any kind, you would see as the subscribers go up, as the number of towers go up, as the number of users go up, then also there would be a rise. Maybe not parallel, but certainly a rise that corresponds with a rise in the, um, a rise in the mobile phone users. There's not. Here's an interesting graph for you to look at. Now there we can see the number of cancer cases reported. At the bottom there you can see the number of brain tumors and you can see the number of mobile phone subscribers. In fact, by 2008, we basically reached saturation where everybody in the United States had at least one mobile phone. Uh, of course, this is an average because there was probably some guy who had none and there was another guy that had two, but on an average, there was more than one mobile phone per person and yet we don't see any kind of uptick at all uh, in cancer rates. And this data goes back over decades and we've been able to track that usage over the last 30 years. And there you have it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Android Authority. I hope you've enjoyed this look at 5G technology and the fact that the world is being run by cat people. If you did enjoy it, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this, then please do subscribe to the Android Authority YouTube channel. And why not subscribe to the Gary Explains YouTube channel as well? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.